Hey everybody, it's Shadowstar and Crystal here for another review of Supergirl. This time it's Childish Things, an episode that was alright, I guess. Yeah, it was alright, it had its moments. It... So we have our villain, Toy Man, who's. He's like the trickster if the trickster had no personality whatsoever. Yeah. But... Uh, apparently he gets a lot worse in the comics, worse as in. Evil person, I mean, but... We're not here to discuss comic books. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we have the villain, the toy man, he does stupid things, but all in all, he's Wynn's father, which adds that annoying dynamic. And he's one of those stupid criminals that feels like they're not responsible for anything. Like, he still wants to get revenge on that guy, and he says, Oh, that guy, I forgot his name, he, he put me in jail and he ruined your childhood. No! You put you in jail by doing the bad stuff. I hate it when criminals they, do that. There's also this annoying scene with Wynn and Kara where they're talking and Kara's like, no, don't send him to jail because then he might get the death penalty and Wynn's like, who cares? And, oh, it's just like that scene with Malcolm Merlin in Arrow. Remember? When the when it's like, oh, I can't let Thea get Malcolm killed. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because he he knows that, because Thea, even though it's not logical, Thea would feel that guilt, even though it's not her fault. For, they feel like they're sending someone to their death when really it's, she's just, she would have just been handing him over to the police to carry out justice. Exactly, he escaped from prison and he tried to kill a whole bunch of people. And gonna... he already did kill a whole bunch of people. Exactly. I'm surprised he doesn't get the death penalty now. We never find out what happens. Supergirl finds him. That's it. Yeah. But There's nothing find... more. He's gone back to jail. I guess we don't find out what happens to him. Oh, well, one day we will. But I suppose, yeah, that's... I don't really care for that side of the plot. It was all right. It was an interesting villain, whatever. We do have... We do have Cat Grant's plot, which isn't too much of a plot. It's this plot where Lucy Lane is going to work for Cat Co. And then there's drama with James because it's like, oh, don't have your girlfriend working at your workplace. Yeah, or but something. while she's thinking about it, there was an interesting moment. She was doing some research and she said, oh, did you know 90% of Cat Co. companies are run by women? And James says, that's cool. And I'm just thinking, well... If we said 90% of something was run by men, you'd be like, but what about the women? That's not a quality. But when we say 90% run by women, you're like, yay, feminism, girl power. Well, it's still what? season one. They're still getting, they're not getting it straight. Yeah, but it's not just the show. You see it all the time on the internet. People say, oh, yeah, it's all girls. That's that's so great. Oh, if you think all girls are bad now, wait till a certain episode of The Flash. <laughs> okay. Uh. But, yeah, um, I just, I hate that. It's like this double standard of equality. Like, if it's all girls, it's still equality. Like, no. We've gone past equality and... It's like some people think we need to have some all-girl things to balance out all the all-male things in the past. Like, that's not how equality works. Just forget about the past, move on, and just have everyone be equal. Speaking of moving on... Yes? But yeah, that plot with James was boring and achieved nothing, and it's just even more drama. And they keep doing these stupid scenes where they have them having affection for each other, and Kara walks past, or someone walks past, and people, stop doing it! It's annoying! I'm sick of these love triangles! Speaking of love triangles... Okay, but that one... That one isn't so bad because... They're already boyfriend and girlfriend. They're gonna kiss. Kara needs to I know, accept but that. Kara... Whereas when she hugged James and Wynne went nuts, for one thing it was just a hug, and for another, even if it was more than that to them, they weren't together. So yeah, I understand. It's still drama. annoying. I'm sick of these love triangles in season one. Oh, it's the worst part of season one. At this, yeah, but at the same time, I feel bad for Wynne. Oh, poor guy. Why do you get a this stupid? I I can relate to him because I always like 
to be in love with someone and they don't love you back and you know she she just sees him as a friend which yeah I, I wish that she could love him back and she could be with him but she doesn't and we can't change that so. you know what it is I want to find this annoying but I shouldn't because I was about to say you know what it's like Barry and Iris only it's better you know why because it's in in the end Rin doesn't get Kara. Spoiler alert. So guess what? It's actually a good thing. It's a, it's sure, I don't like it, but at the same time you think about it, that's the better lesson than no, Barry. No, let's just swap her around. Can we have Barry and Iris not be together? And we can we have Kara actually be with That's Rin? true. They have better chemistry and yet they're not together, which yeah. is also a good lesson because sometimes someone you think you've got chemistry with is not necessarily someone you end up with. Yeah, this is a much better lesson. Exactly. You know what? That's the thing. Although I hate the... Love dramas in season one. I will actually say that Supergirl handles things better than both Flash and Arrow in terms of the main protagonist's love life. And we'll get into that as we progress through the seasons. But I like that they don't nail it down compared to, say, Flash, where from basically the first few episodes you can see Barry and Iris. Yeah. Yeah, it is a good lesson and it's realistic. Wynn has to deal with that. Kara has to deal with always seeing James around with Lucy and accept that um, yeah, she can't this have is, him. Yeah, this is the season of love triangles and unrequited love and all that crap. Speaking of other plots, we do have the side plot with Maxwell Lord. First, we open with a fun scene of like John and Kara flying together, which was a nice little fun scene. Yeah. But then, you know, you get Jean trying to investigate and he finds out about the girl that Maxwell Lord's keeping and all that stuff. And it also turns out that Maxwell Lord is now spying on Alex, which means he now knows that Alex and Kara are together. Together. <laughs> because they're adoptive sisters. Yeah. But yes, uh, we get this whole thing with Jean Jones because, of course, he feels guilty about stuff he does and all that. Yeah, and he warned us and said the more he uses his powers, he phrased it as he'll become the Martian Manhunter, which I guess just means the more he uses them, he has less control over them, I guess. You'd think it'd be the other way, and you'd think you'd get more control the more you use yeah, it. Yeah, you'd think Given that. the fact that he probably hasn't used it in such a long time, and he didn't exactly do a good job of it in this episode. Yeah. But something interesting about Maxwell Lord is that in his phone, he listed Alex's number as something that seemed random at first. It said Mata Hari, which I had to Google. It's a phrase used now to mean a female spy who seduces targets for information. Um, there's also a 1931 and he's, he movie. He does that right as he's getting a call to have a date. Yeah, exactly. It's like he knew that she was d using that date to distract him. Of course. Which I actually like the fact that if you think about it, he knew that, but he still went along with it because he thought, I can gain some advantage from this as well. Because he yeah. did. Yeah, he he's not that dumb. He made backups or something of the security footage. Well, also more in the sense that he figured, well, he's getting something out of this fake date too, because that's how he was able to plant something and spy on her. Oh yeah, true. But okay, while that was a nice, while that was clever, it doesn't exactly help the fact that the villain is boring. The lovey dovey crap, I don't care for, and yeah. You know, Two lovey-dovey craps because you've got the Wynn stuff and you've got the James and Lucy stuff. Mm. Honestly, there wasn't that much in this. I'm only giving this a seven. I was going to say seven as well. It's it's just there. It's not awful, but it's definitely one of the... It, it is one of the episodes where you think, dang, it's not that... This is one of the weaker why people don't remember season one so fondly. Which is a shame because I'm thinking to later episodes that involve Wynn and there are way better Wynn episodes in the future. Oh, I'm just thinking of one in particular. Anyway, what's the name of the next episode? Strange Visitor from Another Planet. Well, this show's all about aliens, cause, so that could be alien, anyone. But I actually think I know which one it refers to, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Could be anyone. 
But I suppose we will see you next time for more Supergirl and other things as well. See you next time, guys. See you next time.